those kind of commercials came out in the 70s. And that was a real movement because it came out like around the same time as Black Panthers, you know, like when they had yeah. their afros. And so people felt really empowered by wearing their natural hair. I want people of color to feel comfortable talking about it and to feel comfortable being like, no, this is me. And mm -hmm. I'm not changing how I look just because you're uncomfortable or I'm not changing how I look because you don't know what's going on with me or you're not educated enough. I haven't watched it, but I can see it in my head. <laughs> I'm yeah. so hype about this. Hello, Juniper. Hello. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm pretty good. How about yourself? I'm good, but I'm better as a result of that funky little background you've got there. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. It's just a random background I found on Pinterest, and I thought it was very fitting and very cute. So. Oh wait, did you say rent? You can rent them. Oh no, I didn't rent it. I just downloaded it from Pinterest. I Pinterest was like, is like oh, a we're renting. Role. Like, yeah, I thought we were starting to like rent virtual backgrounds. I was like, people make money anywhere nowadays. That's crazy. They really but do. No, they they really really do. But no, it looks super cute, and so do you. And I am very excited to learn more about the documentary. Yeah, I'm Why? excited to talk about it. Good, as you should be. I, I don't know why anybody would make a documentary and be like, oh, no press, please. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into it. Why have you decided to make the documentary? What is it about? What is it called? Let's start with those. Okay, yeah. So uh, my project is called Heavy as a Head. And I started it actually in my senior year of college. I was doing this project for my documentary photography class. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about political things and basically connecting, you know, photography to something political. So I decided mm -hmm. to do the Crown Act because not that many people talk about the Crown Act and the Crown Good. Act is, uh, it was proposed in 2020 and it's about mm -hmm. anti-discrimination against people of color for their natural hair in workplaces. Yep. Um, and because of that, I wanted to take the very little amount of people of color that we had on Ringling College's campus and take pictures of them, you know, ask about their experiences. I just had my iPhone at the time. So I was just like, you know, See, asking that's them enough. That's yeah, enough. Mm -hmm. I was asking them questions through the voice memo and just being like, so like, how do you feel about your hair? Like, have you encountered any microaggressions? Do yeah. people interact with you differently when you have different hairstyles? Mm. And, you know, the conversation was pretty heated, you know, like because heated. Had, Why? Oh, not heated in a bad way, but just like okay, everyone but like passionate. Had, like, yeah, it it was really passionate because everyone has these opinions, and mm. it's like I can tell that this is a subject that isn't really touched on that much. So I wanted to use this opportunity as a way to bring it to the forefront and really center yeah. those conversations because they're not talked about. No, I agree. That's why I did this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I just got to a point where I was like, unless I wait for a documentary to come on Netflix and then I don't see anything for another three years, I'm not going to see anything about my hair. And it's either that or talk about it in private. No, 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 no. Like, and there's like so many food programs, so many reality TV shows with people no, spreading really their legs wide open and drinking Hennessy. But I don't see anything about my hair. I don't really, it's not right. So I completely agree. Yeah, like I really don't see anything that uh, televises what we go through on a daily nope. basis. Um, and even with that project, you know, it was mostly photography based. So I went mm -hmm. to a bunch of barbers. I went to hairstylists in the area. Again, there aren't that many hairstylists or barbers in Sarasota just because it's a predominantly white town. But One second. It... Where is Sarasota? I'm geographically challenged. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Uh, so Sarasota is in Florida. Of course, like in the United States. Um, right. Okay. No, I've been to Florida. Then yes, you're right. <laughs> yeah, Sarasota is very, very beachy. Very like it's a it's a retirement city. Um, a lot of people yeah. go there when they're you know done with work and ready to wind down. Um, ready to just so, shut yeah. it all down and chill. Okay. Cool. So yeah, predominantly white. Yeah. And as a result of that, you had a small handful of people to work with. <laughs> Very limited selection of people, yes. Um, and it was really nice talking to them because they also didn't know me. And I yeah. wish that I had known them like the whole time I went to Ringling because Aww. I was doing my hair by myself. You know, I had to learn how to do my hair because no one else knew how. Yeah. Um, Are there any yeah. hair salons or anything like that there? Any hairstylists? Yeah. Um, there was oh, like man. two that I ran across uh, that two. had their own like brick and mortar. <laughs> But yeah, two is very. Oh, very that's good. Fun. Yeah. Oh, I was like, 
that, that's, no. that's not a, it's not a lot but i suppose if there really aren't that many black people like what's yeah. the point i went to um i went to italy oh sis t- tread lightly when you go to italy i went to oh rome there were, like no black people no Absolutely. you know i do hear some things about italy but yeah, yeah. and they were real scary mm. <laughs> like staring staring and i'm turning around like and normally you'd expect them to be like oh still staring i was like oh, yeah this they're staring aggressively like, they've never like they don't look person. away they yeah. don't look away it scares the crap out of me when i look at someone like and they look at me like i'm thinking to myself oh okay and that was what it was like and i didn't see a single black hair no i saw one pillar line i saw one oh. in the whole of Rome. yeah so i kind of know how that feels but at the same time you would think that i don't know the u.s is such a large place so this is probably a really stupid thing to say but in terms mm-hmm. of like a population of black people, especially in places, not Florida, I guess, but like, I guess in places like New York and stuff, you'd imagine, yeah, there's a lot of black salons and black people. So then Mm -hmm. how did you transition from taking some photos, doing a couple of interviews to be like, actually, (laughs) I'm going to take it to the next level? Well, after I took those photos, I I knew in the back of my head that I wanted to expand it into something bigger, but I just Mm -hmm. didn't have the time because I was like literally about to graduate. So I had to wait until (laughs) you had to (laughs) actually graduate. (laughs) Yeah, I had to wait till I graduated, adjusted to my, you know, regular nine to five life. And then I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to revisit this project, but more under the guise of something moving picture like I try to connect photography and film a lot um, Mm -hmm. because those are the two professions that I'm most passionate about so Mm -hmm. um, I was watching like a bunch of Afro Sheen commercials and I was like wouldn't it be cool if like I did something very similar to an Afro Sheen Mm -hmm. commercial where the main character like if you're unfamiliar with Afro Sheen it's basically just you know a woman she's sitting you know in the middle of the camera she has an Afro and she's dressed like royalty and there's a narrator talking about her, basically saying, like, beautiful, regal, uh, this woman wears Afro Sheen. And, like, if you want to be royal, you can wear Afro Sheen, too. You know, things like that. I'm so um, American. I love that. Yeah, it's like. I love, the, okay, Afro Sheen. I will Google that afterwards. Carry on. Yeah, Afro Sheen is amazing. Um, those kind of commercials came out in the 70s. And that was a real movement because it came out, like, around the same time as Black Panthers, you know, like when they had yeah. their afros. And so people felt really empowered by wearing their natural hair. And mm. that's what I want to get to the root of in this conversation. With my uh, with my project, it's actually a series of commercials. So it's like four commercials, they play back to back. And they're supposed to touch on, you know, topics that uh, we face culturally, but that other people probably wouldn't know. Um, so like the first commercial, for example, yeah. is called uh, the barbership because it's a combination word of barbershop relationship. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so my, like, I was literally thinking that it's the connection between the barber and the person, right? Yes. Yes. So it's yeah. like after you get your hair cut by the same barber three times, you're already you're locked in, you know, like yeah. you can't go to a different barber. It's long term. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. You're in it for the long haul. Like you might as well wrap it up. <laughs> Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about and kind of like shed light and humor on the situation just because it's like, isn't it kind of funny how we do this? Like we really do this. Um, (laughs) and then like, you know, people that I, I think it reminds me of how I feel about either hairstylist or actually weirdly enough, nail tech. Yeah. I go to the wrong nail tech and then they're like holding my finger like I've done something wrong and I'm like ah, ah. or they're like <laughs> shaving it down or one of them I was literally like can I have black and they were like it's not Halloween Excuse oh me. my gosh I was like let me take my half turn hand and leave I should have never come here like right. I know right. I should never cheat on my nail tech or my hair salon but the way that men the way they go on with their barber is madness. It is a relationship it for is. real for real. They see them more, sometimes, especially if men work away a lot, they see the barber more than they see their woman. <laughs> they do, yeah. I mean, especially like, I think, um, I'm only aware of these experiences, of course, because I have male cousins and I have yeah. a bunch of brothers. Um, and my oldest brother, like, he used to go to the same barber it was somebody who was in the family and Mm -hmm. there was one day we were like, you know, out on a trip for spring break and he couldn't go to that barber, even though he really needed a cut. So he was like going back and forth in his head, like, Oh my gosh, like, I feel so bad. You know, like he's going to know. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, he's going to know that I got a cut by somebody else. 
And that's really a thing that I wanted to touch on because it's so funny, but it's also so serious. Like it's so deep. No, it is. Yeah. That's so cool. Okay, so there's four of them, right? So that's the first one. Yeah. So the uh, that's the first one. The second mm -hmm. one is called uh, the Hairy Godmother, and it's basically a fairy godmother that shows up and grants you hair products, but she gives you <gasps> the bare minimum hair product. So she tells you like she gives you like a bottle of shampoo. And that's it. And you have to like work with it. She tells you to like do a wash and go because it's like a lot of times I don't think people are aware of how much we spend on products annually, but we spend almost like 1.2 billion on yeah. our hair products per yeah. year. And yeah, yeah I, I wanted to touch on that as well. Um, but yeah, the really weird that, um, I was just literally writing a blog so i'm going to start doing a blog on my um texture talks website because i have a lot to say and i make a lot of mistakes <laughs> yeah. and the blog today is about um how trial and error is kind of low-key a waste of time and the reason it's mm -hmm. a waste of time is because until we go to a trichologist a hair coach an educator or like you know somebody that actually understands hair and scalp and they right. can say, oh, you have a very dry scalp. You create more sebum. You can't really do twists because blah, 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 blah. You shouldn't use this product. Blah, 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 blah. Until we speak to somebody like that, and there's many people like that that exist, then I just feel mm. like we're wasting our time. Like, we're just running around in the dark. It's literally like, imagine somebody was like, oh, I have the key to your flat. And then you had one of the big keychain things. And you're like, I would much rather flick through this, actually, and pay for every key I get wrong. I hope that's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, yeah. how I feel it is. It, like the whole hair product situation is crazy. I've definitely been sent on goose chases before just trying to find things that work for my hair. And I feel like yeah. I still don't know what works for my hair. Um, like for a I few no years, idea. they're like, oh, you need to put avocado in your hair and you need to put like tree tea tree oil in it. And you need to make sure that water is the first ingredient for like every product you use. And then there was somebody that came along that was like, uh, you're not supposed to put avocado in your hair. Like that doesn't even work. You know, like the, the mm -hmm. follicles are too small. You need to be doing this instead. Just go weeks without washing your hair and then wash it so that it can build up its natural oils. Oh, and then no. somebody else was like, you should actually be washing your hair pretty uh, often. And I'm like, yeah. so which one is it, guys? Wait, like, what are we doing? Wait, what are we doing? Because yeah. everybody's saying something different and it's stressing me out. No, I can't right. understand. That fairy, that fairy hair mother? Mm-hmm. Is the, that right? The hairy, the hairy, hairy godmother. Hairy godmother. Like, fairy hair mother? <laughs> <laughs> hairy godmother. That is fantastic. That's actually inspired. Well done, you. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Yeah. So Understand. the next one is called Wilma here, and it's about a woman who exists in the 70s, and she's talking about the hair plight that she has even in mm. the 70s. Um. So it's like a whole monologue of her talking to the camera being like, are you tired of switching between products and yes. not knowing which one actually works? And then she's like, yes. well, me too. Like, and then she, you know, she goes on this whole thing and she breaks character, um, even though she was originally there to like promote whatever hair product for the commercial. Oh my God, that's so cool. I can literally picture what you're saying. So she's supposed to, <laughs> she's supposed to be in the app <laughs> and then she breaks character. <laughs> yeah, so that's- I'm like so excited. <laughs> That's the one that's directly taken from the Afro Sheen commercials because usually in the Afro Sheen commercials, the women don't say anything. But this time, I want her to be talking directly to the audience, like breaking the fourth wall, being like, Yeah, I'm tired of doing this for my hair. And like, whatever style I have in my hair should be what it is. Like, I don't want to have this to switch it up. Be just because, yeah, it, it's, it's really a whole thing. Um, I really enjoyed doing that commercial specifically because uh, the person who plays Wilma. Um, yeah. Her name is Tamia Iman Kennedy. She mm -hmm. is amazing. Like she memorized her monologue. She had it down. Ooh, when we got on set, it didn't even take. Yeah, it didn't take that long at all for hers. Um, because I was like, wow, like, yeah, she's really passionate about it. And I was, I was glad that I was able to give her a role where she could really like act. Because yeah. her her goal is to be an actress. I mean, to be honest, I haven't watched it, but I can see it in my head. <laughs> I'm yeah. So hype about this okay and, and then the fourth one. Oh my god i'm so excited these are gonna be amazing <laughs> oh yeah so the fourth one is called uh jerome says um <laughs> or no sorry the fourth one is called soul train sisters sorry okay. and um 
the, the that one is basically just a narrator describing each model's hair. There's only three models in the commercial. Mm-hmm. Um, and as he's going down the list, or she is going down the yeah. list, it gets harder for her to explain what the hairstyle is because she's also very outdated in her thinking. Um, yeah. So after the first model, she nails it. You know, she's like, oh, yeah, this is just a roller set. Like, beautiful. Oh, yeah, it's standard. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then, like, the next two, she's like, uh, they've got, like, some kind of, like, twisty thing going on. Like, I'm not really <laughs> sure what that is. Um, and that one was pretty fun to shoot as well because... That sounds um, <laughs> Yeah, I told them to like just really go overboard with their reactions. Like, yes. act like you're really pissed that they can't even get your hair right. You know. Yes. Um, and that one was the only uh like silent commercial we did outside of like mm-hmm. the narrator talking. So it's really cool to convey a message like, but silently. You know. This is so sick. And where is it going to be? <laughs> like, where are we publishing these things? Because I'm low key. Like, can we get them in cinemas? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've been thinking about um, doing like a limited run in cinemas, but I haven't mm. really sat down and thought about that yet or like committed to the idea. Um, okay, but, but think of course, about it. It's the, yeah. I think about it. <laughs> it's for sure going to be released on YouTube and Vimeo um, just so okay. that I can get like, you know, different types of audiences. I really want to hear people's opinions on it yeah. um, so that they can talk about their own hair experiences this is really to open up the floor for everybody else so yeah. i'm just happy to be the person that kind of facilitates that conversation i agree and i think the way that things are delivered to us matter i think mm-hmm. sometimes everything is very doom and gloom and it's really it's, oh, it's so stressful and yeah. it's sometimes easy to open up a dialogue when it's a little bit comedy <laughs> yeah we all know that, especially as black people, life is a mess sometimes. Yeah. We are all aware. We experience it every day. Give me a little joke so that we can just kind of kiki and have a good time. <laughs> and then we can, oh, we'll, st- we'll start talking about it naturally anyway. We'll get into yeah. a conversation about it anyway because it's an incredible visual and it's obviously a very relatable experience. Every single one of those yeah. things will start dialogues. And if they get into a deep place, they get into a deep place, so be it. But at least you can have some like entertainment value that isn't just like dragging you down. And it sounds right. all four of those. I'm so excited. Gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, like my um my manager was calling it uh edutaining people because it's like educating them and entertaining them at the same time. Which yep. I mean, I didn't even know that was a thing, but I'm like, I feel like I do that in most of the stuff I create, just being able to be like, hey, that was kind of funny. But there was a lesson there also, you know? <laughs> you're preaching to the choir thing. It's like literally yeah. every day I will wake up and I'll talk about a video. And will we have some kikis? Sure. But the yeah. end goal is normally, but no, please take this away and think about this. <laughs> like I, I want to leave and then have you be like, okay, let me think about like, let me reevaluate some things, you know? Let me just do um, a review, you know? Let yeah. me let that information settle on my spirit. And then I can I can work out what I want to do with it. I completely agree. That is the way to talk to our people, I swear. <laughs> right, yeah. And I think also with something so important as like the Crown Act, bringing attention to that and really talking about how, yeah, it was proposed to 50 states and only 20, 20 of them have been like, yeah, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. It's kind, that's kind of and crazy. It's like, it's like, what about the other 30, you know? Because it's like... <laughs> 30. Am I just like not supposed to show up to work with an Afro one day or, you know, and and even working in a corporate setting, um, when I change my hair, I do get different interactions and uh, your dog is so funny, but (laughs) I do get like, shut up, please, (laughs) I swear to God, carry on, (laughs) my dog is the same way, but um, yeah, like you do get different interactions when you wear certain hairstyles and especially yeah. like with me I went to well Sarasota like Ringling College is a PWI so yeah. when I was going there I definitely had different interactions um yes and <laughs> I just want people to I want people of color to feel comfortable talking about it and to feel comfortable being like no this is me and mm-hmm. I'm not changing how I look just because you're uncomfortable or I'm not changing how I look because you don't know what's going on with me or you're not educated enough like educate yourself google is free Right. People can look these things up. Is free. Let's get that patted. Google yeah. is free. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not your personal Google. <laughs> Leave right. me alone. Like I'm not a walking spark note. I don't know what to tell you. Um, <laughs> but yeah. 
<laughs> it's it's really a whole thing. Um, and also with that project is yeah. it's also part photo series. So Ooh. the photo series delves more into the heydays of like Jet Magazine, which have been discontinued. Um, Ebony oh, Magazine man. also, which was also discontinued. Um, really? I looked up recently. Yeah, I looked up that Jet and Ebony Magazine were discontinued because their writers weren't getting paid. Um, so they had to file for bankruptcy. So they couldn't, yeah, it, it was a whole thing. So the writers were like, okay, if I'm not going to get paid for like this edition of what I wrote on this article, then I don't want to be a no, part of this what, anymore. Like, what's the point? You have to pay people. <laughs> yeah, you do have to pay people. You and do. I mean, like in Ebony Magazine, I haven't seen anything about them recently, but I know mm. that Jet has moved to an entirely digital platform. Oh, I've been okay. trying That's to not the worst thing in the world. That's a good yeah. idea. Have, have they yeah. responded? I I can't find their email. Like, I don't know I'll if help their you. email don't has worry. changed. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm good with that type of stuff from my, my life in corporate sales. I'll help you. Sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, I, I can't reach out. So I tried to reach out to a, an affiliation of them instead, yeah. but they also haven't replied. And I'm like, don't man, worry. I just need to like talk to them, you know? No, um, I understand completely. I've done a lot of... Um, I sent a load of press releases about text to talk a few months ago. There was like one person that replied, and I was like, "You guys are going to be sorry one day." <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember every email. Okay. <laughs> I don't forget. But no, what you're doing is incredible. The photo series. Where's that going to mm -hmm. be? And is that going to be launched at the same time as the video? Oh yeah, yeah. So that's going to be launched around the same time. Um. The photo series was already done. I did that like way back okay. in June, just yeah. because I was like it, it, like it was in phases for me. I have to divide like big projects into phases. Yeah, good idea. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna find the models for the photo series, do the photo series, find mm -hmm. the crew for the film, and then do the film. Like I'm not gonna yeah. try to do it all in one go. But um, yeah, the photo series went pretty well. I had probably eight models. They were all pretty mm -hmm. chill. Um, did they all yeah, have like different hair the... types and like styles? Yeah, yeah, they did. And then they also dressed <laughs> like it was the seventies, which was pretty cool. Ooh, um, I, I was love able to, that. Oh. yeah, I was able to give them like pointers on what they should wear. We had a whole meeting. I gave them like a lookbook that I made. Um, so that lookbook. that was really cool. Yeah, yes, that is cool. It was oh, nice. I'm so excited. Okay, when and where exactly are people going to be able to find this? Oh, so they'll be able to find it early October um, mm -hmm. on YouTube. If you want to stay updated with this project, you, you can also go to Heavy as a Head Film on Instagram. Um, that okay. is like the landing page for everything related to this film. Of course, I post things through my own Instagram page, too. Of but course, but that's okay. Like to, yeah, to keep that separation, I, I rather, you know, post it on my um, other page. So I do exactly the same. So Heavy is the head on instagram mm -hmm. heavy yeah. is the head film you gotta film. put the film in there you gotta put the yeah. film in there otherwise we don't know what's so gonna come can... up yeah i don't know what i don't know, what I don't know what what that is answer. okay perfect well, well i always have a um texture talks web page so i'll have yeah. a beautiful photo of you any images you want me to put up and then all of the links and stuff will have them on there anyway so people will be able to find it and then i will That'd help cool. as soon as it's released I will like share everything on my Instagram. I'm so excited. I genuinely feel like it's going to be amazing because I can, if I can picture something, yeah, it's real in my head. <laughs> yeah. And I can picture every single one of those commercials. I can picture them perfectly. I think it's probably mm -hmm. as well because it's from my community. It's like, bah! it's let me hear you bark <laughs> one more time. Because it's in my community. So I have a direct relationship with a lot of the stories you were saying. So I get it and I can see it. So I, I'm probably going to be like one of the first people like, is it out yet? Is it out yet? Is it out yeah. yet? <laughs> That's valid. I'm sorry in yeah. advance. Okay. I mean, I'm my, mom on your has case. Been, my mom has been asking me to like right after okay. the weekend after I filmed, she was like, so like, is it out yet? And I'm like, no. So. <laughs> and everything. Um, but yeah. Where is it at? It's really been a nice process. Uh, like the crew that I've worked with has been very nice and understanding. Um, yeah, I've only done one other project before. Like I've only directed one other thing, and they've been really understanding about that. They have the experience and they're able to kind of like guide me through the process. 
Yeah. Uh, so that was really cool. And they're also really receptive to when I don't like something or when I'm oh, like, I, I want to try more of something. So yeah. Okay. Shout out to It's going to be awesome. Okay. Shout yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> make sure we'll, we'll make sure we'll, do, um, we'll give them some creds. I love when people get creds. Like even my uh, videographer for my podcast. I yeah. love giving that man creds because it's just, it can't just be me. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't like, work with just you, one. I really could not have done it without everybody that was there. Um, the crew was really nice. So, Okay. Well, I'm very excited. And I'm sure everyone else will be as well. Thank you so much for coming and talking about it. Everyone's going to be hype when it comes out because I don't think there's a... Let me think. No, I haven't seen anything like, anything like that. I've seen the odd <laughs> advert on Dove. It's not the same. Really, yeah. is it? Thank you so much. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure you go and follow at Heavy is the Head Film, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Mm. In the meantime, please tighten your bonnet, oil your scalps, and protect your edges. And I will speak to you soon. Bye bye.